Hello and welcome to Dr. Tim's Game Dev Experiments. Outer Wilds is one of my all-time favourite games and has many cool things that I could have chosen, but for my first Game Dev Experiment I decided to see if I could recreate the starry background. There are a couple of things that make this interesting. Firstly, the stars in Outer Wilds explode one by one over the course of the game. It's surprisingly hard to catch one in the act of exploding, but here's one I spotted that I was able to zoom in on before it was too late. The other thing that makes these stars interesting is that they are a lot closer than you think. I recently saw a deep dive into Outer Wilds on the Unity YouTube channel, where the developers very briefly showed their starry background system. Although they didn't go into loads of details, one thing that they mentioned which caught my attention was the fact that the stars are actually only a few metres away from the camera. They just look like they're in the far distance because they are being drawn to the screen before anything else and follow their camera around so that they always stay the same distance away. I wanted to see if I could work out how they did this as well as see how close I could get to the overall look and feel of the exploding stars. For this experiment I'm using Unity 2020.3 which is the current long-term support version. I'm also using the Universal Render Pipeline, but most of this should be pretty similar regardless of which renderer you're using. In the Unity Deep Dive video, the developers mentioned that the stars are just quads on the surface of a sphere drawn to face the camera. When a star dies, it is replaced with an exploding star particle system. I decided to do something slightly different and use particle systems for both the static stars and also the exploding ones, as it's pretty easy to chain particle systems together in Unity. I started with a basic particle system and set the emission to be a single burst of 10,000 stars at the start using a sphere of radius 10 for the shape and forcing the particles to spawn only on the surface by setting the radius thickness to zero. I've set the max particles to 100,000 just to be safe in case we want to have more stars later. Since we don't want new stars to appear we set the emission rate over time to be zero. The starting lifetime of each star is set to random between two constants with a minimum of one and a maximum of 600 seconds in this example which means some of the stars will die almost immediately and all of them will be dead after 10 minutes. In Outer Wilds, the typical star lifetime is a lot longer than this, but I chose 10 minutes because it makes it easier to find a star that's actually exploding. I've also given the stars a bit of variation in size by selecting random between two constants again, and after a bit of experimentation I decided that these were good values. I think the stars in Outer Wilds are a little smaller than this on average, but I liked them a little bigger. Finally, each star will have a random colour based on this gradient that I set up, which gives a nice set of semi-realistic colours. Fun fact, I actually studied astronomy at university so I can tell you that these colours represent the temperature of the stars, with blue being the hottest, through to red as the coolest. For the renderer I'm just using the default particle texture in the material because it actually looks pretty good for stars, but you could switch this out for something different if you prefer. I've set the surface type to transparent and the blending mode to alpha, although you could try pre-multiply or additive and it won't really make much difference, it's just up to you. And that's it for the basic stars, let's see how it looks. I've set up a simple scene with a bit of terrain and some trees, plus added the first person controller from the Unity Starter Assets pack to let me walk around. And I've added a nice campfire for a bit of interest and to give it a bit more of that Outer Wilds feel. The camera currently has the background type set to a solid black colour, so we're not using a skybox here since they didn't have one in Outer Wilds. I'll show you later what we need to do differently when we're using a skybox with this system as there are a couple of gotchas, so stick around for the appendix at the end of the video if you want to see that part. Okay, so we've got some decent looking stars and they're in a nice sphere shape, but they currently just sit there and we can walk right up to them. They don't look like they're way off in the distance like they should. So now it's time for a bit of scripting. You may have spotted that I've got a script attached to the stars called Stars Manager, but it's currently disabled. Let's turn it on and take a look at what it does. I've hidden some stuff for the moment, but we'll come to that soon, so don't worry about it. For now, all we're doing is grabbing a reference to the main camera and then setting the stars to the same position before making the stars a child of the camera so that they always follow it around. Now you can see that the stars go wherever we do, but if we turn or tilt, they're still aligned with the camera, which is not what we want. So we just need to reset the rotation of the stars every frame so that they stay fixed in the sky. And that's done the trick. However, it still looks like the stars are only a few meters away from us, so we're going to have to sort that out next. Going back to our stars manager script, we need to grab a reference to the particle system renderer for our stars, and then set the render queue of the material so that it renders first before any of the other geometry in the scene. Conveniently, there is a render queue enum that gives you a few handy defaults, so I'm going to use the one for background, which happens to be 1000. And we're nearly there! The stars now look like they're way off in the distance, and are fixed in the sky, which is exactly what we want. 
You can see in the scene view they are still only a few meters away from the player camera, but in the game view they look like they're behind everything else. The next step is to add the exploding stars. For this we need to set up a couple of new particle systems, although they are quite similar to each other so it's not too complicated thankfully. The first is for the shell of the exploding star. It uses the same principles as the main star particle system except we spawn the particles inside a very small sphere in a burst of 300. There is a random range of sizes but this time there is also a random range of rotations and a random range of starting speeds so that the particles fly outwards in the explosion. Finally, the individual particles last between 10 and 20 seconds. Whereas the original stars simply live for a time and then die in an instant, we want the explosion particles to start bright and then fade over time. We do this with the Color Over Lifetime module and set up the alpha so that it causes the particles to fade away. For the particles themselves, I prepared a set of four sprites in a 2x2 sprite sheet just to give a bit of variety. And I've set up the texture sheet animation module so that it picks a random sprite from the sheet and shows only that sprite for the lifetime of the particle. The renderer uses another particle material but this time I'm using the emission option with an HDR colour rather than the base colour because the particles look better with a bit of bloom which I've got set up in this scene. There are pros and cons to using the emission rather than the base colour. If you use the base colour instead, the particles won't glow in the same way, but you would gain the ability to vary the colour more, or even inherit the colour from the star that existed before the explosion. Unfortunately, you can't do this when using emission, which is slightly annoying. I expect you could do this with a bit of scripting, but I've decided I'm happy enough with how this turned out that I'm not going to bother. For the second exploding particle system, I duplicated the first one and tweaked a few settings so that the particles stay more clumped together and are slightly larger. Other than that, it's essentially the same. When combined together you get this nice effect with a tight core surrounded by a halo of exploding debris before it all fades away. One final thing to note is that these particle systems have the scaling mode set to hierarchy, so that if we scale the main particle system, the explosions will scale properly too. This will become important later, as you'll see in the appendix. You'll notice that these two particle systems are set up as children of the main star particle system. This is so that we can take advantage of the sub-emitters module which we can set up so that the explosions happen on the death of the star particles. The emit probability is set to 1 so that every star explodes and I'm not inheriting any properties from the original stars. If I was using the base colour instead of emission for the explosions then I could inherit the colours of the original stars by selecting colour from the drop down, but in this version all the explosions will be the same pale blue that I defined as the emission colour. So with all that set up, let's see what it looks like now. OK, it's looking good. Although the explosions are now visible through the scenery. Let's quickly fix up the script by grabbing the particle system renderers for the sub-emitters as well as the main stars and setting the render queue as we did before. And that's fixed it. OK, so how did we do? Let's take another look at the original stars from Outer Wilds. And here's our version. That's not bad. There is some fine tuning we could do I'm sure, but overall I'm pretty pleased with that. If you wanted longer lip stars, you just need to increase the maximum lifetime in the main particle system, but otherwise you're good to go. Now if all you wanted to do was replicate what they did in Outer Wilds, then that's it, you're done. But if you're curious how you'd use this in a scene with a skybox and a day-night cycle, then please stick around for the next few minutes. Here's what our stars look like with a procedural skybox, a directional light to represent the sun, an extra script to let me rotate the sky, and a few additions to our star manager script. The stars now track around along with the sun as the sky rotates, and when the sun rises, the stars fade from view. Great, so what changes do we need to make to our stars manager script to make this work? Now here's something I didn't realise before starting on this experiment. It turns out that skyboxes are not in fact drawn before everything else, like you'd expect. Despite the fact that the skybox material has the render queue set to 1000, which you can see by going to the debug options in the material, it is in fact rendered after everything else. If we set the render queue on our stars so that they get drawn before the scenery, the skybox also covers them over. This is not what I expected to happen, but you can see what I mean if I set up a slider for the render queue of the stars and gradually reduce it to see what happens. The stars disappear behind the skybox first at around 2500, before they disappear behind the trees and then the ground. 
I'm guessing that Unity is doing something clever with the skybox to avoid overdraw, but I don't really know enough about how it works to be sure, but one day I'll look into it. But anyway, this means that we can't change the render queue of the stars like we did when we're not using a skybox, we have to do something a bit different. Instead, we have to scale up the star particle system as much as possible while still staying inside the camera far clip plane. I've set that up in the star manager script so that we can toggle between these two options. And I've also added a way to adjust the brightness of the stars depending on where the sun is in the sky using a simple animation curve and a dot product calculation in the script. When the sun is below the horizon, the dot product is negative and the stars are nice and bright. Then as the sun rises, the dot product becomes positive and the stars fade away. And there we go. That was the first of my game dev experiments. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Let me know if you use any of this in your own projects, and I'll catch you in the next video with another game dev experiment. Thanks for watching.